Good evening, Greensville Charge and Fort Grove United Methodist Churches. For those of us that are, for those of you that aren't aware, uh, in the Greensville Charge, it's Independence United Methodist and Mount Pleasant in Purdy. This is our Ash Wednesday service. And it is the beginning of Lent. Lent is all about embracing the resurrected one with a whole and longing heart. And we mark the beginning of Lent with this service. It is a time to set our hearts right and to look forward to the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ once again. The wonderful man, Emmanuel, God with us, that died for our sins on Good Friday, some 2,000 years ago. But he does that every day. He takes the way the sin. And Lent is a time for preparation, to prepare ourselves for the resurrection. It is a time to get our hearts right. In doing some research for this service tonight, I came across uh, an article on a Catholic website, a Catholic website for youth. And uh, I thought it very interesting, and uh, I think most of us can relate to it. Uh, some of us are a long time since our teenage years, but uh, we can still remember. But I want to read what Mark Hart wrote, and he starts off with this. Excuse me, uh, you've got some dirt on your head. Every year someone says that to me on Ash Wednesday. Maybe it's happened to you in the past. And it, it used to frustrate me, but in recent years, I've come to see a great opportunity to, to evangelize, to share with someone about the most important person in my life, Jesus Christ. So what do you say when folks ask you about that smudge on your forehead? Excuse me. I'm not operating at my desk, so I'm a little, at, uh, a little off here. But we will get through it. He says, here are a few responses that I would not recommend. The ignorant response. My mom made me go to church and get them. I have no idea what they mean. The sarcastic response. I'm protesting showers. Today, ashes. Tomorrow, I'm going to swim in raw sewage. The ridiculous response. I have a big zit and I'm trying to cover it up. Is it working? And then the practical but misguided response. Better dirty on the outside of my head than on the inside. And then he goes into a few responses that he would recommend. The biblical response. Over 40 passages in the Bible associate ashes with mourning and grief. In Old Testament times, people used ashes as a sign of repentance. They would sit in ashes, roll around in them, sprinkle them on their foreheads, or even mingle them with their food and drink. They did this as an outward sign of their inward posture of repentance. You can check out Daniel chapter 9, verses 3 through 6 for an example. Ash Wednesday begins Lent, a time when we stop and assess how we're doing in our walk with God. Lent helps us to identify spiritual areas in which we can grow in sinful areas that we need to avoid. To repent, put simply, means to turn away from sin and turn toward God. We use ashes as an outward expression of our need to begin again. A traditional response, he goes on, ashes are a sign of physical death, as in ashes to ashes and dust to dust. We began as dust, a joyless, and lifeless existence. And our bodies will return to dust until we are raised up by Christ. By receiving ashes and keeping them on, we publicly proclaim our intent 
to die to our worldly desires and live even more in Christ's image, which we focus on during the season of rebirth that is Lent. Lent is a Latin term for spring. And the historical response. For over 1,200 years, on the Dies Cenarum, the Day of Ashes, faithful followers have approached the altar and received ashes upon their foreheads. These ashes are made from the burnt palm fronds that were used, that were blessed on Palm Sunday the year before. The ashes are sprinkled with holy water, usually fragranced with incense, blessed using four prayers that are thousands of years old. We're not done with Mark yet. He says, the use of ashes for repentance and penance can be traced even as far back as is practiced throughout the world. On Ash Wednesday, ashes are applied to believers' foreheads in the shape of the cross. Then there's the symbolic response. God formed Adam out of the dust of the earth, which we read about in Genesis chapter 2. In addition, Jesus healed the blind man with clay, earth and spit, in John chapter 9. And then we mark ourselves with ashes as a new beginning at the onset of Lent, allowing the life of Jesus to make us whole and new again. And then there's the most basic response. I'm a sinner. I don't always love God as strongly as I could or as directly as I should. Ash Wednesday reminds me that it is only through God that I have life. He gave it to me. Ash Wednesday also begins my preparation for Holy Week and the passion and the resurrection of my Lord Jesus without whom I have no life here and no chance of eternal life in heaven. This is just a great opportunity for me to get better. Thanks for asking. And he closes with this. Now remember, this is a teenager. God forgives, he loves, and he gives this sinner a second chance. Simply put, my God kicks ash, S-A-S-H. Ah, well said, very well said. And sums up in a lot of different ways what Ash Wednesday means. I want to read from 2 Corinthians, starting in chapter 5 at verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors, Paul says. God is making us appeal. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Now continuing in chapter 6. As God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says, at just the right time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us, and no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, put in prison, faced angry moms, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights, and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness, by the Holy Spirit within us, and by our sincere love. We faithfully preach the truth. God's power is working us, working in us. We use the weapons of righteousness in the right hand for attack and the left hand for defense. We serve God whether people honor us or despise us, whether they slander us or praise us. We are honest. 
but they know us, they call us imposters. We are ignored even though we are well known. We live close to death, but we are still alive. We have been beaten, but we have not been killed. Our hearts ache, but we always have joy. We are poor, but we give spiritual riches to others. We own nothing, and yet we have everything. That is who we are as Christians. We can own nothing and have everything just by giving ourselves to Christ. In the best way we can today. That's what it's about. The best way we can today. So we come together on Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, in the season when we prepare. I think I shared um, this past Sunday that, you know, I just, I didn't understand about, I really didn't understand about Easter and in, in my early days when I was trying to find my way back to Christ. And, you know, I just didn't understand all those things and, and how much it meant. And I didn't, I didn't understand Good Friday and, and that Easter was the resurrection and that's what it was all about. I didn't understand those things. And now I do. I do with such love it is so important what Christ did for us. He was resurrected on the third day so that he could live forever. A little voice is telling me to explain to you about those three days. Good Friday is the day Jesus died and, and well if we count the days the way we would count days he would have been resurrected on the second day and not the third day. Well understanding the Jewish calendar so Friday Around noon is when he died, and that would have been day one. And then the second day started at sunset on Friday and ended on sunset on Saturday, so that's day two. And then, of course, Sunday started at sunset on Saturday, and that would be the third day. Uh, I got asked that question by a young lady at Matthew's Chapel when I was there, and I didn't have the answer. But uh, so uh, just in case you didn't know that, I know most of you watching right now didn't know that. And I, uh, uh, but I always like to explain it because we have, we have well over a hundred people that watch us every week and, and some of them are new believers. And so they need to understand. Unfortunately, we're not together so that you can receive the mark. But the mark is no less important. You see, some have pointed out that Ash Wednesday is one of the few times when we, the followers of Jesus, are marked in a visible way. And it is both humbling and exhilarating. It is both rending of the heart and claiming the promise. The ashes remind us of our mortality and our sinfulness, but they don't crush us to the floor. They are applied with a sense of hope and the confidence and the promise that brings us to this very moment. To this very moment. I ask you this Lenten season to choose something to fast from. It doesn't have to be food. But whatever it is that you fast from, you replace the time that you would have spent on that thing. I'll give you an example. One of my youth uh, at the Korean church uh, when Donna served there, um, he gave up video games. He gave he played video games four hours a day, and he agreed to give up two hours. And to take those two hours that he wasn't playing video games and read his Bible. He was very reluctant. He really was very reluctant to give up his four hours of video games. Now understand, this is a young man who uh, not only goes to school and gets straight A's, he is also a musician, and he practices his music on a daily basis, and uh, a really good kid, So, uh, and he got plenty of sleep each night. But uh, after one week of giving up the video games for two hours, he gave them all together. 
And he replaced that time with studying the Bible. Really good kid, Chris. Um, so that's the idea. And, and it's not to make a change for just these 40 days. It's 40 days, my family, it's not these, so it's really 46. Um, it's to make a permanent change in your life. You can choose something to make a permanent change in your life. It's up to you. What is a sacrifice for one may not be a sacrifice for another. So it is not ours to judge what others are using for their fast. So choose something, please. I'm going to try something. Um, and I hope this is going to work. I practiced it. Kind of worked. Um, but it is that time when we do impose the ashes. And I can't be with you to impose the ashes. But I'm going to try this. From ashes you came, and to ashes you shall return. And if you think too wet, you are too wet. Please take this as your symbol of the mark. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, all those who are watching now and will watch later, I pray, Lord, that you be with them and help them to embrace this time of Lent, beginning this day, whatever day they're watching, to embrace this time of Lent, to walk to the cross with Christ, to walk through those final days when his, his disciples didn't understand what he was saying when he talked about death. And of course, those final days in Holy Week, when after the Passover feast, he was taken. Help us all to walk those steps with Christ during these next 46 days so that we can fully embrace the resurrection. Help us all to be willing to die to ourselves with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that we too can be resurrected in his love. Amen, amen. I want to lift up a special prayer right now. Uh, one of our wonderful, wonderful folks from Independence, April, uh, her mom has just gone in the hospital today, like this afternoon, and uh, we don't know um, exactly what's going on. It's kind of a mystery right now. She lives uh, in the Farmville area, but um, for, uh, folks, please be in prayer for April and her family uh, and the kids. You know, and her husband, Gary, I know they're all very upset by this and uh, an uncertainty. And she just lost her stepdad not too long ago. So uh, please be in prayer for him and uh, for safe travel for those that have to go there. And Lord, I also want to lift up another prayer that uh, we may be kept safe from this next ice storm that's coming. And uh, Lord, if you can, uh, just, just raise the temperature just a little bit so... It's not so hard. And uh, people that are that were hit really hard before are going to be, looks like they're going to be hit hard again, Lord. And I pray that you keep the power on and, and keep the water flowing for all those in the affected area and for those that might have to travel, Lord. Find a way that they don't because nobody can drive on ice. Amen, amen. God bless you all. And thank you for joining us.